So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. And now for the review of the day. All right, got a five-star a review from Nick and Stacy called SOTM, and that's the acronym for State of the Market. I love the regular guest interviews and the value provided. What happened to the weekly state of the market? I really enjoyed this as it provided a good insight into all of the movement in the industry and some insightful opinions. I love doing them and they will be back. We just took the summer off. Luckily, there hadn't been much news anyways this summer, but we just took the summer off. So we'll be back. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, today's guest is impressive. And I'm not going to give you too many details up front because this dude is going to deliver some serious value today. This is James Nay from Richmond, Virginia, one of NAR's top 30 under 30 in the nation. And I'm telling you, impressive is, a, is the tip of the iceberg with this dude. We've already had some conversations and you guys are going to absolutely love this. So James, without further ado, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars, man. How you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me on. I look forward to it. Hopefully somebody can get something of value out of this. They definitely will, man. Let's jump into it. So tell us about you, your background, and how you got started in real estate. Okay. I was born and raised in this town. So uh, naturally, I had a lot of connections. Um, went to school at Old Dominion University and studied economics. That was right in the you know downturn recession time. And the classes were kind of being, you know, the topics were right on point with the housing market, everything that was going on. So I was interested. Uh, my father spent a couple years selling real estate with a, a local regional firm, Long and & Foster. And uh, after college, I went into personal training. So I was a trainer at Gold's Gym and uh, made more connections there. I, I knew I wanted to get into real estate. At that time, I thought I just wanted to get into real estate investing. So rental houses, doing flips, uh, eventually apartments and commercial, but uh, it was kind of a pipe dream at the time. So that that kind of sums it up. <laughs> and then how'd you transition into real estate from there? So as a trainer, I had a, a, a client that was an awesome agent, Susan Stein. So she, she was one of my uh, personal training clients. And then I also I had a mentor that worked for Remax in town. So I had two different... Uh, a mentor and a client and, and they both were you know co-signing me like yes you would be awesome at this you need to jump in you need to do it because i expressed to them you know i have interest in real estate at some point you know once i can save enough money up so that's really what it boiled down to is finances as a i had a goal set for myself and i think somewhere along the line somebody i was networking with gave me this figure save ten thousand dollars and then get into real estate because you don't want to be a part-timer that's, you know, working most of the time to support your bills so you can barely devote any time to real estate. So I saved that 10000 uh, It took me a couple years to do it. You know, I was living in uh, South Side of Richmond in a two-bedroom apartment, um, driving a, uh, you know, 17-year-old Volvo station wagon. So it wasn't like I, you know, was living a luxury lifestyle and was handed a bunch of money to, to, to be a successful agent. And I know you know, there's a lot of agents out there that wonder like, well, maybe he had a Lego. It's like, no, you know, I, I, I struggled for a while and um, it paid off. And it paid off big, man. So we're going we're gonna to let the audience know that in just a little bit, how much it did pay off. So from the very beginning, you were still training a little bit at Gold's Gym in the beginning of your real estate career, right? So how many months were you doing that? 
Yeah, it was, you know, roughly, I, th I think it was about three months that okay. I was going in really early and training clients, you know, like six to eight or 9 a.m. And then coming back really late in the, or not really late, but coming back in the evenings, like 7, 7.38 and training until about 9 p.m. Um, and I was able to actually work a lot of the gym clients as work them into real estate. So I was, you know, people I was training became my clients. So it, it worked out really well. But I hate saying it because I don't like for people to think like, oh, okay, I can transition and keep my job and become right. an agent. I, I made sure I was devoting well over 40 hours a week to real estate. Okay. So what you're saying is, and how old are you? Tell the audience. I'm 26 years old. Yep. Okay. I will awesome. be 27 next month. Nice. All right. So what you're recommending is save some money up and then jump in feet first. Yeah. hundred percent. Because you know, actually at River City Elite Properties, where, where I am an agent at the brokerage, we don't really, I think it's, you know, we're, we don't even allow part-time agents. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's kind of one of those things. It's, and it's not to weed people out. It's because it's so much harder for that agent to be successful doing it part-time. Sure. Sure. And we want to show them that. Yeah, no, I totally get that. I mean, this is a full-time business. And when you treat it like a business, you should be in it full time. If you don't treat it like a business and you're part time, you know, I do know some part time agents sporadically that are doing well. I guess well is relative to whatever your goals are, right? So yeah. if, you're, if you're part time and you're making 20 grand a year off of it, that's cool. But when you treat it like a business, it turns out like you've got it. So we're going to get into that right now. In the last 12 months, how many houses have you sold? Uh, in the last 12 months in 2018, I sold 104 houses in the last 12 months. It's closer to, uh, like 116, I believe. So, dude, um, going up a little bit. That's, that, that's, that's freaking awesome. How, how many, um, like what's your average price point? How much volume is that for you? 117, 116 houses. How much volume is that? So in 2018, when selling 104 houses, it was, uh, just under 25 million in volume. Okay. Love it. And then as far as uh, GCI, what's that look like for you? Uh, rough uh, 632, 632,000 gross commission. Killing it, man. Killing it. Love that. And then profit margin. What, what, what's your profit margin? You Pretty know, much. and it, it, and this is where a lot of people, you know, sometimes people are like, you didn't sell 104 houses on your own or whatever, <laughs> and, or, or really, is that true? And then this is where they really kind of are like, let me see some documentation. It's right. the profit margin. And now, I, and I assume you're, you're talking about, you know, after splits and taxes, right? Yep. yep. Um, so it's, it's around 90%. And, and that is kind of a big reason of that is I don't do any of the online leads, any, any of the uh, Zillow leads, or, you know, I don't uh, have much overhead at all. So, you know, the, the profit margin is really high. And I've met with other teams in the area and we kind of pick each other's brain. And it's crazy to see where, you know, you can spend a ton of money running a yeah. team as far as buying leads and, and agent support. A hundred percent, man. So that's impressive in itself. I, I've, never, I've, I've never talked to anybody that has a 90% profit margin. So yeah, my, I know the audience, my, my, my uh, accountant would, would, uh, would love you because she's like, you, you know, she's, she's glad that I want to do everything by the book, but right. at the same time, she's like, you got to start spending more money. <laughs> yeah, you, do, you do, man. All right. So let's get deeper into that. Cause I now at this point, I think the audience is saying, all right, wait a minute. This guy is 26 years old, sold 104 houses in 2018 made $632,000 GCI with a 90% profit margin. All right, what's this guy's team look like? Tell us. Yeah, there's no team. So, you know, I'm an <laughs> individual salesperson, um, no buyer's agents, um, no, you know, personal assistant, or, you know, I, I do utilize my brokerage, uh, River City Elite Properties, the brokerage I work for has a, uh, an office admin that does transaction coordination. So I do utilize that, um, but other than that, you know, no uh, employees specific to me. And that's why you have a 90% profit margin, which that dude, that is massively impressive. Let's dig into that a little bit more because I, I feel like at this point, the listeners are going to see that they're going to hear this and say, how the hell is that possible? I mean, I've been in business for seven years and I don't, in the retail side, I mean, dude, 10 transactions a month, 
you know, roughly, that's a lot of transactions. It's a lot of moving parts, a lot of variables. I mean, yes, you're getting a lot of referral business, but dig into that. Can you dig into that? I mean, I mean, what are you doing? What systems are you using? How are you selling almost 10 properties a month by yourself with a, basically a part-time transaction coordinator? Yeah. I mean, you know, right now, uh, where I'm at right now, I absolutely love it. So there's a lot of people that are like, James, you need to get your life back. You need to, you know, hire people in. I'm one of those people as cliche as it sounds like I love this lifestyle. I'm addicted to it. Um, I, I love spending time with clients and it, what's cool is when you're working the referrals um, in, in its sphere of influence, it's you're spending time with people you want to spend time with, you know, yeah. you're spending time with people and whether I knew them or not before, almost always, you know, we, it turns into a friendship and a relationship where, you know, I'm invited to their housewarming party or, or certain big events. So it's fun. I love it. Um, you know, I, right now where I'm at in my business, uh, I, I want it to keep going like this. I don't have any big aspirations of, of creating a, a huge team or anything like that, but how it looks, you know, I'm not, like I said, you know, I, I'm not using any lead generation systems. Uh, I do use, uh, Buffini, uh, as, as a tool, um, to stay in touch with past clients. Right. And, and we do a blitz here at the office. I'm sure a lot of listeners have heard of the blitz. Um, I also use referral maker. I was using top producer before for a CRM and, and what a CRM is. If anybody's listening, doesn't know it's a, a, a management system, client relations, where you can put in everybody, whether it's your friends, your family, if you don't have any past clients, it's then I, I would suggest friends, family, um, anyone you may have worked with before. Um, and, and you put them in there, you know, their first name, last name, their home address, their cell phone. And if you don't have those items, then it, it's a good reason to call oh. and check in with them. Yeah, it's, it's a good reason to follow up and say, hey, you know, I just wanted to let you know I'm in real estate now and I'm really excited about it. And if you ever have any questions, I'd love to help you and, and not the whole sales gimmick. When, whenever you're ready to buy or sell, use me. People see that all day yeah, long 100%. on Facebook and everything else. So it's kind of creating value. Like, hey, I want to help you. I'd, I'd love to answer questions. Um, and that's what I've done is, is use these databases to make sure. And right now I'm trying to find systems to make sure that I'm really doing it and staying personal with it. Because I don't want to be that guy that, you know, sends out a system generated email right. to everybody. I want to make sure that, that I'm there for my past clients. And then in terms of your buyers to listings, what's that percentage look like? So actually a little bit more on the buy side. So in, in 2018, and I keep saying 2018 numbers because I have it all out in front of me. Right. Um, I've, and, and that's what with the 30 under 30, that's what it was based on was 2018 numbers that you know were verified by NAR. So it's 54 listings and 62 buy sides. Wow, man. So I want to break that down again. 64 buy sides? Uh, no, 54 listings and 62 buy sides. So just, let's just talk about those 62 buy sides. Five a month. And you're handling all the listings. How, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, get your life back. People have recommended that to you. You love this thing. But how are you finding enough time to spend, uh, to, to be... Um, of service and of quality service with these massive amount of clients that you deal with on a, on a daily basis, literally, I mean, five active transactions a month, maybe even more plus the listing. So you got to follow up with a ton of people, your clients, the agents you're putting all, you're writing your own offers, right? Correct. Yeah. Are, writing I mean, my own offers, you know, addendums. I'm at the home inspections. I'm at the photography appointments. I'm the one that actually sticks the sign in the front yard puts the lockbox on the house. So none of that is, you know, hired out. You know, I, I, so I do all of it. Why not leverage that? And I know that there are listeners right now that are, that are, that are yelling at their radio saying, what is this guy doing? You could be leveraging yeah. all this stuff out. So, <laughs> so to answer listeners, to answer your question that you're probably thinking right now, because I know I am, um, why not leverage just some of it, dude? Like, why not? Like at least a lockbox or the signage. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, honestly, and, and I agree with you on lockbox and signage, yeah. but I like to use every opportunity to get in front of, of, and 
I mean, honestly, a short answer is, is it's working. It's right. working. You know, I mean, I, I talk to a lot of agents. There's a lot of people in town. It's like, what's the secret sauce? You know, what's really going on behind sure. the scenes that allows you to do this as a, a, a new agent, a young guy and B not paying for any, any referrals or lead lead generation. And I mean, I kind of was laughing and I, I was like, you know, let me, let me show you what it, like an average week looks like. Like this is my planner. And it's just everything is so scheduled out. And I'm the so type of person. Break that, if, break that down real quick for the, for the people that are listening to this. They can't see the screen. Break down your typical day. What's that look like? What time do you wake up in the morning? What do you do? Do you do a miracle morning? Do you meditate? Do you go to the gym? What's your day look like? You know, I try to say, say uh, a, a prayer in the morning. Um, I used to, obviously, as background with personal training, um, I try to at least get in the gym three or four times a week. Now, that is really hard to have a set time. I, right. I'm kind of, you know, I'm a gym member. And this is funny. People in my office joke about this. And, and it's not meant to be this way. But I'm a member to, like, most gyms in the area. So, like, the probably seven or eight different um, gyms. Now, some of these are franchises where there's yeah, yeah. three in a, in a pack. But uh, and a lot of my referrals come from the gym because I knew a lot of people there. I had trained people there where, you know, personal training clients – it's more than just like, Hey, 10 reps over here. You know, you get to know people, you earn their trust. Right. Um, and, and that was awesome. And, and I never had that intention of, Oh, these, you know, this might be a big client source of mine, but I just say to say, don't forget about the people that know you and like you and trust you already. I see a lot of people get hung up trying to earn people's trust on a cold lead that they saw online or something. When it's like, you've got all these people that already love you, that they're your biggest fans, whether it's your family or your, your core group of friends, those are people that should be sending you a ton of your business, you know? That's a great it's, point, man. Yeah, typical day, like, you know, on uh, this one was uh, cr create a home search for a family relocating out of state, um, showings to a client that's looking at downsizing, selling their... Uh, riverfront home and moving into a uh, town home and, you know, maintenance free so that obviously I'm, I'm looking I'll constantly trying to see what maintenance free communities sure. uh, have listings coming available. So, so four showings right there. So create a search four showings, uh, lunch with another agent, a networking lunch. I love networking mm -hmm. lunches, uh, savvy card training. It was something that I'm sure a lot of agents have seen that come up I, I, It's like, you know, let me, let me learn something new about this app. Uh, Two, at this point, we're at 2 p.m. Um, scheduled call with a new buyer uh, to set up a search and talk about the process. And I, I want to touch on that real quick is with dealing with a high load of volume. I think educating your clients is so important. Um, so a lot of times it's not like, hey, let's go meet at this house and kind of fly by the seat of our pants. We've scheduled either a call or a consultation in the office. We've gone over the whole entire process, earnest money deposit, home inspection, appraisal, you know, contract negotiation, negotiating the uh, inspection, bringing up, you know, what's realistic, what's not. So a buyer already knows exactly what they're getting into. Um, and they, they, we set up the search ahead of time so they can learn the market themselves. Right. Um, so what you're saying is you're applying your power within a, a purposeful structure so that you're educating clients and clients aren't just dragging you all over the place. They're actually, you're setting them up for success almost. So yeah. what, what, what most, I think, I think most agents just kind of want to feel good about taking clients out, but you're saying like, hey, look, I'm not going to let people drag me all over the place and I don't want to drag them all over the place. I want to set this thing up for success from the beginning so that they're educated, they're making good decisions. They're not just seeing 50 properties. They're seeing the properties that they actually want. Like, how do you yeah. do that? What's your, what's your buyer console look like? So the buyer console, it's not like a, a PowerPoint presentation that's going to go in one ear and out the other. I yeah. actually, I like to actually write it out each time. So like, hey, and I'll, and we'll either have, you know, the screen up or we'll have, uh, you know, my laptop out and, or we'll, over the phone, they'll have their computer up and they'll be looking at a search and I'll say, hey, let's take this uh, property, for example, 123 Main Street that's on your portal right now. It's listed at 390000 You know, it's been on the market 42 days. In our current market, a realistic offer 
you know, maybe 385 with 3000 in closing. And so we just do hypotheticals Got it. And, uh, versus one that just hit the market and it's the same neighborhood, same square footage. It's priced at 370 and it's like, Hey, well, you see this 392 that's 44 days. This one's going to sell quick. So we go over different, you know, hypotheticals. We spend about an hour, maybe an hour and a half um at, at at the longest and then they know everything to expect i see some agents that are they'll tell stories and they're like yeah you know we made an offer and i told my clients to write the earnest money and they were you know they didn't even have the money it's like wait so you didn't tell them ahead of time that they were gonna <laughs> have to have you know some skin in the game and uh I, I and that was me too so let me not critique other people that was me too as an early agent it's like oh yeah by the way there's this check so i've just learned that educating them and then also one quick thing to touch on is I'll have a buyer that's like, James, I can't wait till next year. I'm definitely going to use you as my agent. And, um, and so what do you, you know, we'll get together in about 11 months and I'm like, no, 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 let's start it right now. And I'll set you up on a search. And I promise you, there's no pressure. I know you're in a lease for another 12 months, but I want to set you up on a search in the area and we can even do it a little more broad. So that way they've already learned the market over 11 months. They're looking at listings. They're seeing how many days on market, what price to expect. And they're learning it as it goes through that winter, that spring, that summer. They're seeing exactly how it's changing and evolving. So when it's time to buy, they already know that, you know, they're almost a mini real estate agent at that point, you know? Yeah, I love that. So let's go back to your schedule. So you got a couple things in the morning. What else? Is it, is it structured every day where you do the same thing in each, in, in each time block or you just? You know? No, it's not. No, it, it's kind of, it's one of those things where, I know you said, you know, you don't want to let the client kind of drag you around, but at the same time, I, I am a little different and I've heard a lot in a lot of training semin- seminars, tell your client what works for you. Now, right. don't let them tell you. And I'm kind of a, a good mix of if, if I'm, if I'm on Wednesday of this week and I'm looking at Tuesday of next week and it's not that full, I'm going to let them choose. Um, you know, I'm going to say, Hey, you, so you said next Tuesday works for you. What time would you like instead of, so my every day is completely different. Obviously, I eat at about the same time uh, if I if, if I can squeeze that in. But you have time to um, eat. You know, I actually order fitness meals, so they get delivered to my office, and yeah. they're very real affordable. So, yeah, I try to eat, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, there's no rhyme or reason to when showings are, or when listing appointments are. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of at the client uh, client's scheduling their discretion. Okay. Yeah. And then what's your, like, what's your afternoon and evening look like? So, uh, a lot of times just based on, on most, most, uh, clients work schedules being nine to five, a lot of showings or listing appointments in the evening, uh, during the day tends to be more paperwork, more prep as far as, you know, scheduling photography and, and doing photography, meeting an appraiser, meeting a, a termite guy, um, stuff that you would probably advise me to leverage out <laughs> and, uh, and, and just making sure everything's running smoothly. I am so OCD about if there's something to do and somebody says, Hey, don't, don't rush or anything. Let me know tomorrow. What, what floor plan the builder had at that house. It's like, all right, I'm going to be back to you in 10 minutes. I'm calling the builder right now. And they're like, no, trust me. This happened last night. It was like six o'clock on a Friday night and uh, I'm at a baby shower and I'm like, Hey, I, I got to do it right now. And they're like, what, what do you mean, James? And I'm like, I don't, I, it, it'll eat at me and I won't be able to right. enjoy where I'm at until I get this done for you. And they love it. And it's true. You know, I mean, and that's just my personality. And I think it's allowed me to do, a, 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 a you know, a lot of great things is just, it's not rocket science. It's, you know, doing what you say you're going to do, being honest um, and, and not being lazy it, is kind of some of the fundamentals, communication. It, you know what I mean? Tribeofmillionaires.com. Guys, write that down. Rockstar Nation got a free special offer for you. Now, I've just written a book, and it's just been published. Co-authored it with David Osborne, who's been on this show multiple times. If you don't know David, he is one of the top execs at Keller Williams Real Estate. Was personally mentored for the last two decades by Gary Keller himself. And he's in all kinds of businesses. His bio and explanation and everything is in this book. But anyways, David and I got together. We decided to write a book. We called it Tribe of Millionaires. And I guarantee you, it's going to change your life. To find out more, just go to tribeofmillionaires.com. We're going to give it to you absolutely free. 
Only thing we ask in return is, of course, number one, you pay the shipping. Not a big deal. But number two, that you go on Amazon and write us a review. We're really looking to get an incredible amount of reviews. And because of that, we're giving this book away for free. Go to tribeofmillionaires.com today. Hey, real estate agents and rock stars. If you're getting value out of the content in this episode, make yeah. sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel. Also, click the little bell icon to be notified about upcoming episodes. Yeah. And I would also love it if you left a comment and shared the most impactful tips and tactics you've learned from the knowledge shared in this episode, or even maybe make a suggestion requesting a topic of what you'd like to learn in future episodes. I welcome any feedback below. Now, back to the episode. What makes you like those things make you different, but like what else makes you so different in your success that other agents probably have, but maybe they're just not tapping into it all the way. Like why have you, why have you become so successful? I mean, obviously there's a level of, of obsession in some capacity, right? Like you love this and you are super diehard focused in on this and it might border obsession, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would say so a healthy one, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I still, you know, care about my health and I care about my friends and my family and I want to do good and do mission trips and stuff like that. So it's not, I don't want people to think that like, literally I don't care about anything else, just real estate. I have other cares and, uh, but I just love what I do a, as a profession so much. And, I, and I'm so grateful to be able to love it so much that I think people see that. They call me and they're like, hey, I don't want to take up, you know, this time or this. And I'm like, I, I, I'm going to have fun doing it. Even if you don't buy anything, like, let's go look at these homes and I'm going to enjoy it just yeah. as much, if not more than you are. And, and I think that's huge. I, uh, one thing I, I want to touch on is that I think some agents come in with an attitude of this client needs me more than I need them when they get to a high level of, of volume. Sure. And, uh, I make sure I let my clients know how grateful I am that they chose me. Um, and I let them know, you know, verbally in notes, handwritten notes. And it's like, I know if they put a post online on Facebook, there's going to be over a hundred comments of, of everybody referring agents, agents coming out. If they go and stand on a street corner, they can yell out. I need a real, real estate agent and 10 people are going to come running. So I let them know, like, thank you so much. It means so much to me that you're putting your trust in me. And we're going to have fun with this, but we're also going to make sure that we don't miss any deadlines, that you're fully protected. And, and people love it they, because they're like, James, we chose you. Like, you don't have to thank us. We were excited to work with you. Right. Like, no, but thank you so much. And, and do, you have a, do you have a script or like a, a template that you write out? Or you just kind of come from the heart every time, like when you're writing a thank you card, when someone signs a, a buyer agency or a listing agreement with you? You just yeah no no script yeah no script on that uh it's from the heart because I truly know that that's how it is you know and I it, it's there's so many agents it's a very saturated yeah, market um across the country I would say and it's you should be really grateful anytime I think any <laughs> agent should be really grateful anytime they're chosen you know that's a great point man. So from that, um, I still am just fascinated with what your life looks like, like how you have time to have a life. Like for anybody that's not, um, you know, watching this on the blog and you're just listening to it on the podcast, I mean, you're in shape, you're well put together. Like every time I talk to you, I mean, you're, you're not rushed, you're not anxious or crazy about things. You're just very calm and, you know, even keeled. It, you think that's a part of the secret sauce that you just... Do you let anything really get to you? Do you let anything bother you? How do you take stress? Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Like, how do you, how do you take stress in this business? Because, dude, you are doing every single possible thing in this business at a very high level or relative high level. And no, forget about that. By yourself, you are doing it at a very high level. And high level in terms of units and high level in terms of the service that you offer and how you show up in the deals. How do you have a life like, and I don't mean that in derogatory. I'm just, I'm, I know that the audience is wondering like, how does this guy actually sleep at night or take time off on the weekends? Like, you know, how do, how do you do that? What's your, what's your life look like outside of real estate? 
it's it's all scheduling you know it, and it's it's i am old school in uh in the fact that i hand write everything down i carry around a planner where i can make notes and i can block time out um for instance on thursday of this week i went golfing with a, a, li- a local lender we played nine holes uh friday yesterday i took my, or my mom and my grandma we went to the reservoir we walked around the water and, and went kayaking for an hour uh went to a baby shower last night um, we'll work on one of my rentals this afternoon with my girlfriend where that's like fun time spent together, right. you know, it's just scheduling it. So, you know, one thing I would say is I don't typically take long vacations. I do get away, you know, a weekend at the homestead or a weekend in Orlando, or, you know, this summer I'll go on a, a week long mission tr- trip to Guatemala, uh, with no cell service, which will be crazy. This will be the third one that I've been on. So it's just scheduling it out. You know, I will say it the team as far as the team atmosphere that some agents have where they can get away that one thing is, is kind of desirable where they have people in place but uh at, at the brokerage that i'm with there's other agents where it, if somebody's out of town you know adam i'm i'm one of his best man and at his weddings he's an agent at the brokerage and when he goes on his uh his honeymoon for two weeks in costa rica you know we'll all pull together and, and help him out and uh and same, same goes for that. If I, if I go out of town, they'll, they'll come in and, and help me out where it's not like they're buyer's agents or, or ha, you know, are invested in the deals, but it's just, it's cool to have some support like that at a brokerage. So you're, a, you're what I would describe as a relationship mastery at this point. You've got a relationship mastery. You, like, I, I, would, I would come hang with you in, in Richmond. That's only three hours for me in Baltimore. I mean, dude, like, you just have this instant way of just warming up to somebody or war- letting them warm up to you. And so would you say that's one of, your, one of your secrets is the relationship that you can build extremely quickly is, with, with anybody, clients? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, you know, I, and, I, and that's why I love the relationship building, you know, I, as far as my business platform instead of cold leads and, turning and burning. I love, you know, I have relationship with gym, uh, not gym, gym owners. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> uh, business owners in the area, whether it's, you know, the, my, uh, vendor that does all of my flooring and carpet for clients, he sends me referrals all the time. Um, and I actually helped his parents sell his house, their house. I helped him with a purchase. I've, uh, you know, my termite, um, inspector, is a good friend of mine. He, I'm helping him sell his house and, and do new construction right now. And that was, uh, you know, it's just those relationships of business owners. There's one business owner, she owns a gym. Um, and she's sent me a ton of referrals from her gym and she was, she was huge and, and kind of like, uh, um, you know, just putting my name out there and, and that's, and then also a friend of mine owns gold's gym in, in, in town. And, uh, you know, it's just those, those business owners, and it wasn't like what was crazy about it is it wasn't like, oh, let me befriend these business owners. It right, just so right. happened that I was already friends with them coming into real estate. And that, you know, that's one thing where I can say definitely, you know, make friends with them. I just think that it's important where your motives are. Like if I'm just going around and hitting up business owners all day, they're going to know that, you know, it's not because I, it, it, it's not like the, if they've probably got 10 other agents doing that, where it just, I just was I hate using the word lucky, but genuine that I was yeah. already friends with these people before I got into real estate, you know? But you're authentic in the way that you start to build a relationship anyway. So people know that you're doing it because you just want the relationship and what comes from it is just what naturally is going to come. You're not, you don't have that motivation of like, well, I'm going to befriend this guy because I'm going to get this business because they're going to refer me out. So that's a really good point. I like that. So let's get right into talking about you know, your sources of business. So we already, we already know that you're all SOI. You're doing Buffini. Um, tell the audience some other interesting ways that you get business. Like, so for instance, there's, a, there's new agents listening to this right now. Maybe they're one week or one month into the business and they're just like, maybe they're, maybe they're struggling. And maybe they're wondering, you know, should I buy Zillow leads? Should I buy realtor.com leads? Should I go to Boomtown? What should I do to get business right now? You know, I've called all my family and friends and they don't have anything going on. What would you recommend to them right now? What'd you do? Yeah, I love this question. <laughs> um, so, you know, when I first became an agent, like I said, I was a personal trainer previously, got into real estate and I wasn't busy. I had nobody that wanted to use me to buy or sell their house. So don't, I, I and I love saying this 
because I didn't just have a golden horseshoe where I came in and all of a sudden everybody's blowing me up. So there was weeks, weeks before I even, you know, showed my first house. Uh, and that's why I am so glad I saved up, you know, uh, a little nest egg to keep me afloat, um, which was that $10,000 we talked about. That was Jay, my, just let everybody know how long you've been in business. Four, uh, just, just over four years. Okay, cool. So, so when I first started, uh, there was multiple different ways. So one, one of which, I, if I had downtime, which was a lot, I would go to the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, and I would ask, I would try to ask, a hundred people. So when do you plan on moving next? Like, Hey, my name is James. I'm an, a, a r local real estate agent. You know, so when do you plan on moving next? And then some people would look at me like, are you crazy? Uh, <laughs> and, and just not like it. But then a lot of other people, you know, you're at the DMV, you're going to wait there for probably an hour. You're sitting there with nothing to do and let's strike up a conversation. And, uh, you know, that turned into, ref uh, actual closed deals and referral sources, um, sold, uh, one of the admin, I don't know the proper term, but, you know, working the front desk at the DMV and she loved it. Like, so how's it going? You getting any new leads today? So <laughs> it, that, it, it was cool, man. You know, I, I'm just like, it's the work ethic. When I, growing up in high school, I was a janitor at a, a private school af, after school was a janitor cleaning a private school and then w was also running a car wash, not running it, but you know, the chemicals cleaning it. So it's always, I've always had that drive, you know, save up, buy my first car, then, you know, save up, do this, go to college, this, yeah. that, the third, where it's like in real estate, it's the same drive. It's like, you know, I want to help people just like personal training, personal training every day. I got to wake up and that's a job where, you know, the pay is not great, but it's so rewarding where it was like, you know, I got to help people achieve goals and, and make themselves a healthier lifestyle in real estate. I get to help people achieve goals that they sometimes never thought were imaginable and uh and make good investments so it's just it's so cool to be able to do something get paid for it that also helps somebody else you know yeah man so a light bulb just went off in some some of our listeners heads right i'm just gonna guess a light bulb just went off dmv that sounds awesome and maybe it sounds scary at the same time break that down so you had this you had the light bulb idea i need to go to the dmv it's a captive audience they're standing in line anyway so how, yeah but, how do you break this down for everybody? How did you do this? You didn't just go to the DMV and start like walking yeah. the people in line. No, right? so I was, yeah, no. And that's a cool question too, because I went to the DMV at the time, like I said, driving, you know, an, an old Volvo station wagon, which I love and wanted to get realtor tags on it so bad. I wanted to get, you know, the R and then I wanted invest or in, in something cool on my car. So I'm in there and, and I strike up a conversation with a woman at the front desk who, who works at the DMV. And she's like, so you're a real estate agent. And I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm so excited. I'm newer to it. And she, she's like, you know, I've always wanted to buy a house, um, but what goes into it? And then we just start talking. I'm like, hey, I can have my lender call you right now. And uh, she's like, well, I'm at work. I can't take the call. And I'm like, what, what time do you have lunch? What time is lunch? Because I'll have him call. He, he's right. awesome. He's going to be great. You're going to love him. And um, just like super stoked. And, uh, and so she's like, all right, I'm at, on lunch at this time. So I have him call. And then I'm like, man, that was so easy. I was just talking to somebody. Natural. And, I, you know, and I wasn't like, oh, look at me. Look at me. It's like, hey, I'm so excited. I'm new. Um, I really want this plate. And I'm like, what do you think? Would invest be cooler or would buy-in be cooler or what would be cool? So we were starting to build that relationship with no underlying intentions of, oh, I'm going to sell this person a house. And, um, and that happened. And then it's like, well, let me, let me try this on, you know, let me talk to somebody else. And so I just kept doing it, kept doing it, turning referrals. You know, I, I tried to do what a lot of people do. I went door knocking at apartments. And first and foremost, let me just say, I never looked into the regulations. I don't know if you're allowed to do this. This might be solicitation or I don't know, you know, I don't know what the rules are, but I, I did it. At the DMV? The, at the DMV. Yeah. And then I know, I know I quickly learned on this next one. I was going to apartment complexes. I was door knocking and I was uh, arranging first time home buyer classes. So, <laughs> nice. uh, you know, I, I was shut down pretty quick on that, that, you know, you have to really find out which ones allow that and which ones don't. Yeah. Um, you know, just to go in there and, and, and hit people up and door knock, but, uh, <laughs> you know, just get, I was getting creative, you know, going to the DMV, uh, go, going to apartment complexes, using social media and saying, Hey, there's going to be a free, 
dinner at my office and, and do a first time home buyer class. I remember Susan and I did that a couple times, um, you know, just getting really creative with it. Dude, that's awesome. So the next thing is you're doing all this on your own. I'm going to keep bringing it up because I think it's impressive and I think it's a little crazy, but you just mastered it, man. And I think it's, I think it's impressive and awesome that you're doing this and you have no desire to build a team or to get admin or, and like that, that's even more crazy and impressive at the same time. Cause, and let me know, just say, that's just right now. Yeah, you know, of course. I, of course. Yeah, but I love that. I don't though. know. You got it down. So what systems are you using? Do you use phone apps? Obviously we talked about your CRM as referral maker, Buffini. Uh, do you use spreadsheets? Like how do you keep yourself so organized? Because I know the listeners know one transaction or 10 transactions, there's a lot of variables in there. One transaction could run you crazy. I mean, if you had 10 crazy transactions at one time, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, how do I, how do I do it? And I don't know if this is allowed or, or normal, but, um, I just, I do use whiteboards. I, uh, I, for those that can't see, I'm kind of showing E in my office right now and, you know, whiteboards, what transactions, this is by so side us, right here. Tell us what's um, on it. So go, go back to that whiteboard real quick. All right. I've got to kind of keep it kind of a little further away just cause there's names on there That's and whatnot. Fine. And I don't know if you can just read give me it, the head. Gonna, just give me the yeah, head. So, We've got the address, what closing it is, the inspection date, the uh, inspection addendum. Has that been done? Termite, um, uh, well and septic. We have a lot of well and septic here. Attorney, uh, client source, where it came from. So client source, let's, let's just hit this one. That, my doctor. Right. Yep. So, uh, and then if it's, you know, somebody else, uh, we've What's got- What's the rest of that? Uh, What's the rest of the board? So client source, you got address- so, Loan type, uh, what type, what type of loan it is, um, home warranty. Is there one? Do I need to order one closing date? When's the closing? Who's the buyer? Last one. How do I need to add them to my database? All of those have been added. So address inspection date has the inspection addendum been done termite, well, septic attorney, client source, loan type, home warranty, closing date, buyer database, Up, upcoming listings. Um, you know, and then obviously motivation, you know, what, what it, I, obviously that was system wise. What am I doing to update it? Make sure I'm doing everything I'm doing. Um, and then obviously you got to stay motivated to, to, so in my office, I have a lot of stuff for those that's not seeing it's pictures of me with clients, you know, really memorable transactions, um, uh, mission trips, uh, vacations, you know, just like cool stuff that is, uh, it, it, it keeps me going every day. And, uh, you know, thank you cards from clients that, put up at, at the, uh, at the office and, and refresh them each year. So that, that's kind of the big system is I'm, I'm in the office all the time, you know, and not, I don't think there's any right or wrong way, whether you're a work at home or a come in the office. I love showing up to the office every, you know, six, seven days a week. I love showing up. Amazing read for agents who want to blow their business up. Six Steps to Seven Figures was an amazing read. Pat breaks it down into simple, actionable steps that if taken will almost guarantee seven-figure success in the real estate sales business. Couldn't recommend this enough. Wow, thank you for the awesome Amazon review, Garo215. Now, do you want to get your hands on this book for free and blow your business up? Here's Pal. Go to freesixstepsbook.com. That's free, S-I-X, stepsbook.com right now. Or simply text the word PAT to 444-999. That's text PAT to 444-999, and I'll send you a free book. Okay. Love that, man. So uh, besides the DMV, and your sphere, and the gym, and your doctor, <laughs> what other sources of business do you have? So I do, um, you know, I, I do get sign calls now, and that's not something to expect as a new agent, um, but, you know, people will call and say, hey, I, I just drove by, and I love this house, and, you know, I, I'd like to learn more information about it, so that's always, you know, something as you start establishing is sign calls. Um, those clearly aren't sphere of influence, but, uh, it's a direct result of listings. Yeah. And, uh, I also 
get uh, quite a few off of Facebook. So, you know, it's, I, I, I love targeted advertising and I'm not great at that myself, but you know, I've used a, a local company um, automating your biz. They've, they've done some, some targeted videos uh, where it's, you know, professional videography of listings and then paying for the advertisement to go out. And then I'll get, you know, sometimes uh, messages like, Hey, I saw this, whether they're interested in that one or something else similar, you know, so, sometimes I'll get those social media leads. Um, you know, for the most part, the, I would say 80% plus is just strictly sphere of influence. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, sign calls, social media. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had a, a few in, in to touch on the relationship building. Like I'm, I'm just always talking real estate because I love it, not as a sales guy. And I was talking to an agent, um, about eight days ago and I'm like, how are you doing this? He's building 18 houses right now. He's doing so many renovations. He's owns his own real estate brokerage. And I just love picking people's brains. So yeah. I'm like, Hey, Hey man, how are you doing it? Like, how are you holding up? Cause I'm, I'm the, I'm on the buy side of one of his houses that he renovated. And, um, my buyer loved it. It was in North side of Richmond. And I'm like, how are you managing? He's like, I'm having a tough time. And I'm like, Hey, you know, I, I I've sold, he was like, I'm having a tough time because my heart right now is in building and renovating and it's not really in real estate. And I'm like, Hey man, you know, I would love to be your, your agent. If, if you ever get to that point where you're like, you know, just going all, and he said, I, I've got three for you right now. And I was like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, I mean, you're the guy, you know, I love working with you on this transaction. You've been awesome. You've been understanding your communication is there. Um, if you want to meet me tomorrow night, I've got one on North side. I've got one in the West end. I've got this other. So it was like, and these aren't the ones a new build. I mean, really nice, really sweet house. One's a historic home that's been renovated. So it's just like, that's relationships right there. That's yeah. me not trying to be greedy, but I'm just like, Hey, how are you doing this? I, I'm not, you know, trying to be better than I just want to learn. And he's like, you know what? You're the guy go ahead. And, uh, it, you know, full, full, I, I don't know what the rules are about talking about commission or, or percentages on, on podcasts, but you know, wasn't trying to like beat me down or discount or anything. It was like, Hey, I don't, I'm not pinching pennies. I, I want good service from you. So yeah, you saw you know, the value was, in you. yeah. So, and, th and that was cool though, because, and I've had that happen all, a lot, you know, I've sold for other agents. Um, been referred by agents a lot where agents are like, Hey James, I think this one's a good one for you. It's not in my area. Uh, but I, I think you would do great. And, uh, so a lot of agents will refer me some, you know, that will be for a fee sometimes and, uh, and then selling for other agents and, and, and other, you know, um, investors being an investor myself. So a couple things, um, you're, you're still, you're still newer in the business, you know, for almost four years in, but what's one thing that you would tell yourself if you could go back, you know, to those first couple months in the business that you know now, like what's one thing you would tell yourself or what piece of advice would you give to a brand new agent? Okay. They, they, I love this question too. I love all your questions, but <laughs> Thanks, they, uh, so, so this one is, uh, is huge because I had a lot of fears coming in into real estate. I mean, a lot of us know that this is most people's biggest transaction or asset or investment that they will ever make in their life, you know, at one time, you know, signing those papers. So I was really worried about a being a new agent. B I was really worried about being a young new agent. Um, and then I was also fearful of rejection. So I, I, there was a lot of phone calls I should have made that I didn't. Um, and, and if I could what go back, uh, you know, I just like would hear about like, okay, so that, you know, so-and-so who I know is thinking about some, but they're interviewing four or five, uh, luxury agents. And I'm like, well, I really want to call him because I do know him, but he's interviewing him, him and, and her and her. And they, you know, they've kind of got that market cornered. Yep. And, and I, and I didn't make the call because I'm like, well, I, I'm just going to look stupid here. Um, just I should have made that call. Yeah. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, and, and I should have made that call because I probably would have had a good chance because what I've learned as you know, go over the past three, four years, nobody's ever told me that they don't want to use me because I'm young. Nobody's ever told me that, Hey, you, you haven't been in the business long enough. Yep. I think what people want, they want communication, honesty. They want somebody that's going to work hard for them and they can feel it, you know, but off your first few interactions, they can feel it, whether you're saying it or not, whether you're, 
trying to work for them before they've signed anything for you. I do that all the time. Yep. Um, Explain that you know, a little they, bit. You know, some people are like, well, I'm not going to show any houses until they sign a buyer's agreement with me. And I'm like, well, how are they going to, how do you expect this person to sign a buyer's agreement with you if they don't know how you work, you know? And I agree. You don't want to show 10 or 20 houses right. and, and then get burned. But you What's know, your standard, like two or three? Uh, I, honestly, it depends. You know, I, it just depends. Um, but I, I would always advise if, if you feel like you can get it done, quick, you know, get a, a buyer's agreement signed sooner, do it. But um, I don't want to give somebody bad advice on that. You know, what works for me might well, not here's be. The, what, what has worked for you? So like what has worked for me is, is I, I've, I've never ever told anybody that I won't show them a house until they'll, until they sign something with me. You're I've also never, dealing with all referrals. So would you tell a random Zillow lead that came in or a realtor.com lead or a, you know, just a random internet lead? Would you tell them? Yes. No, or? no, I wouldn't. If, if I was trying to go buy, you know, a Jeep at CarMax and they said, well, I'm not going to show you anything until you sign with me. I'd, I'd go somewhere else. Right. Exactly. Honestly, so it's I would. a little different for you, but that's your experience, which, but you're also, you know, a powerhouse dude, you're, you're doing it at a very high level. So I think there's a lot that people can get from your experience because it's not like you sold 30 houses. You know what I mean? You sold hundreds of houses in your very short time in the business. And it's not like you're discounting your rates and you're, you know, you're listing for, for half a percent or something like you're, you're doing it because people see your authenticity and people see your value and that, and your honesty. And that is, dude, that's such a good point that you're making to the audience is, if you're in this for the money, you're doing it wrong. This is a yeah. business and it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a catalyst. This business is the means to something. It's not, you don't live in this business because you love just the business and you don't live in the, in the result of it because you love the result of it. You have a great mix of both in an authentic way, right? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's so cool because, um, everything that I feared at first was so untrue. Right. Um, you know, I, and just like I said, nobody ever told me they wouldn't work with me because I was young or, or because I was new. It, it, it was all a made up fear in my head. So if I could tell you anything, you know, starting out, um, talk to more people, let them know that you want to help them. Um, you know, and then a lot of times I just, I, because some people have this just any salesperson is a salesperson and they're a salesperson. And, right. uh, and I always tell people like, look, you know, I love our relationship. I know that when you buy a house, you're going to buy it with me. So trust and believe I'm not going to like push you or sway you to buy a house sooner or later or whenever, because if I do that and I explain how my business is, I work by referral. So you're not going to refer me if you didn't have a good experience with me or if I didn't protect you um, as best as I can. You know, there's other things I can't control with home inspectors or whatever the case is. But as long as you know that I am working so hard for you and that we find the house that is, is best fitting for you, then you're going to love to refer me. And then they all of a sudden that tense, that stress of like, you know, we don't want to waste your time and all that is gone. It's yeah. like, all right, this no dude problem. really cares because – also, his business relies on it. Now they realize, okay, like we, James wants us to be happy and so happy. And then they also realize it, it, it's not like, you know, some people don't understand how referrals work. So now they also realize, you know, James is able to, to devote this time and effort to us because he's not out there chasing others. So when we have a friend or family member, we are excited and happy to tell James uh, and tell them about James and James about them um, because he was awesome to work with. Love that, man. So what's your biggest fear now? Um, that's a, that's a good, that's, that's the a hard one. So my biggest fear now, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's the one that's just calling out to you right now. Cause I see, I see your face, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, I mean, I'm not fearful of losing business. Um, you know, I, I love what I do and, and I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I would say I just don't, you know, want to let anyone down. So sure. I guess that's a, a, a big fear. I mean, I've got goals that, that I go after 30 under 30 was a big goal. Um, you know, there's been certain goals in investing in real estate, you know, I, and I also tell people this all the time. If, if you really believe in it that much, you should invest in it. You know, if you're telling right. people all the time, like, this is a great investment, you know, why aren't you investing in it? You know? So like, 
I invest in real estate, whether it's commercial or residential rental houses, um, uh, renovation and resales. So um, I'm always looking for ways to invest in real estate. Um, and, and that's huge. So I guess my biggest fear is not meeting some of those goals too. Uh, sure. So letting anyone down on the client side and, you know, I've got a huge goal to be like you, Ian, and buy an apartment complex. Which I've never done. <laughs> what, um, what about um, the future of real estate? Where do you think the future of real estate is going in the next, so five years ago, five years ago, real estate was a lot different. And today, and I'm specifically talking about like iBuyer type stuff at Zillow and Amazon and you know, all these companies are coming out with you know, internet lead generation and teams getting really big and you know, you're an individual agent. I mean, you're doing it at a very high level, but you're an individual agent and yes, you are very deep in the referral game, which is awesome. But what happens in a year, two, three, five years from now uh, when the, the internet game is even stronger? And people are putting, you know, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a month to generating leads and getting in front of those people that that are referred um, to you. You know, now this team down the street's putting thirty grand a month into, uh, you know, in the internet advertising for their for their real estate team. And you know, the mind only has so much space for advertising and for marketing. So you know, constantly dripping on them, constantly in front of them, chasing them around their Gmail and their Amazon, and what happens? What's your thoughts? Oh, it's, it's so the two different questions. One, I buyers, they're a little scary because yeah. it's unknown to me. Sure. Um, I've, d I've done some, some research on it and I think that that will corner out more of kind of a wholesaler market, which, you know, I don't consider myself to be a wholesaler. Um, you know, I, I think that cause that, you know, the, the way that that I buyer structure is, I think caters towards more, somebody more that wants like, quick, easy, done, not really yep. worried about how much money they make on it. They just want it to be out of their life. And yep. most of my clients aren't that way. You know, they want to make as much money as possible on their sa on the sale of their house. Um, and they want to, uh, you know, ha ha be able to be in a little more control than whereas an eye buyer is just like, here's what it is. And this is what we're doing. Um, right. And that, that's just from what I know. They're not really in our market right now. Um, at least I, I don't know about them right now in our market. I know they're scheduled to come in the near future. But uh, I don't think that that will mess with me as much. And then to your other question, I think it will mess with wholesalers more than real estate uh, professionals. But to your other question, um, I think what, what I do and what I try to do as far as staying in touch with clients, calls, handwritten notes, um, and, and gifts to clients uh, is a lot more meaningful than, um, you know, the drip campaigns. And I haven't, and there's a lot of big teams in town that do the drip campaign or they spend, you know, a ton of, you know, I would say 40 plus thousand on, on marketing a month. Um, and I haven't lost any business to them yet. So I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely not naive to think that there won't be a change right. and, and that I won't need to change my systems. Uh, but I also don't like to spend a lot of time thinking about that. Sure. Uh, Makes sense. Uh, it'll, yeah. You know, it's, if, if I spend my time thinking about how can I positively impact somebody's life, leave them better than I found them, I, I will always do better. And, and a lot of people tell me, like, you're naive, James. You need to be watching what these eye buyers are doing and what, you know, these other teams are doing. And, um, you know, maybe I'll have to learn the hard way with that. <laughs> but you know what, though? The thing is, I, I, I can only imagine what your bank account looks like when you, you make a 90% profit margin and you're not spending any money. And you've uh, had the last three years doing some great stuff. So you're going to be okay. It's not, like, it's not like you're scrounging by and you're taking these huge vacations and going crazy. So if the market shifts, you'll shift with it. And if it doesn't, you keep rolling the way you're rolling, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, I, I pretty much invest everything I make in, into real estate. But you, so, uh, yeah, I mean, as long as, rent, you know, people will still uh, prefer to rent. And then, yeah. yeah and, and, you know, uh, another thing that's kind of cool, I would say about investing in real estate is I'm able to impact somebody's life in a positive way there too. And I tell tenants all the time, my goal is not to keep you in this house forever. My goal is you can rent from me. And then if you, if you would like to, I will help you buy a house 
And here's what here's what the difference looks like. Right. And people are always like, I've never had a landlord tell me that. Yeah. They, they want you in, but then out quickly to buy a house. Well, That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's just, I think, and I've never had an eviction before. I've never had any, any problems with that where, um, in the, what's, you know, what's your portfolio look like right now? Like how many, how many properties do you own? 11. 11. Okay. All singles. Yes. Okay. That's awesome. All, all cash paid for, or do you use loans? Uh, some of both. I saw both. Okay. About right. actually about, I would say about half and half. Okay. Well, if you can half and half 11, but right. uh, <laughs> five, five, six and five loan to cash. Okay. So dude, I want to, I want to, um, I want to wrap this thing up because it, this has been power packed, man, with, with tons of value for our, for our audience. And, you know, before you go, I want to, I want to talk to you about some books and what you do in your downtime. Cause I want people to get a really like this, this is just a really great picture of what you do, how you do it, the systems you use. The mindset you have, the skill set you have, the willingness that you have, right? Because it's, it's will set, skill set, mindset. I mean, those three things we can play in. Literally, we can box ourselves into those three things and we're either successful or not. So what are you doing to educate yourself, to, to grow yourself personally? Books, podcasts, like what are you reading right now? Yeah, so I, I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of motivational uh, speakers and then also marketing guys, you know, Gary V. I, I like him a lot. Um, um, I, well, we actually have a book club too, which a lot of people are like, I have the time to do that. But we, yeah. we do uh, a reading list here at the brokerage and we meet once a month and uh, we've read uh, a lot of the big names, you know, Think and Grow Rich, um, obviously, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I, I, I enjoyed that book. Um, the Energy Bus is an awesome one. And it's the like, Energy I don't bus? know, if, have you ever heard of it? No, no. I recommend that to people all the time. And it was recommended to me by my broker, um, The Energy Bus. Oh, my gosh. It's a short read. And it's not, there's no systems or it's not rocket science. It's literally about attitude shift, just, uh, you know, about positive energy. And, and I always recommend that I've read it probably four or five times in the last two or three years. Um, and some people might read it and think like, man, this is pretty basic or they don't just su subscribe to it. But, uh, but it's awesome for me. And, uh, I, I got a lot out of it. And, um, yeah. So, you know, a lot of, I've, I've watched a lot of different uh, uh, other agents and mentors reading list and we've read from that. Uh, I also, obviously we all have CE, uh, but I will go a little bit more in depth. I did a new construction class on uh, Thursday morning, which was really cool going nice. out and meeting with the builder and going through, you know, a spec house, a house, you know, house under construction, model houses and looking at everything and, it's important to just know, you know, what is code with insulation and, and what is, you know, what are setback requirements when you see R15 on a zoning, what does that mean? What is, what are topo lines, topography, you know, it's, it's important as a real estate professional to know all that stuff. So I take it pretty seriously with CE and taking, you know, non-required classes um, and understanding the contract. So yeah, always reading, always listening to podcasts. Uh, always open to learning. I love this. Actually, this is kind of cool. This morning I met with one of your guests and the only reason I knew about him is, is from oh, your okay. show. So love yeah. It. Uh, Joe McCabe out of uh, Philly. Yeah. He actually woke up at three 30 this morning and drove down to Richmond and, and we uh, had breakfast together for about an hour and a half, two hours and just That's picking awesome. each more so me picking his brain. Most of the time I meet with people, it's like, I've got a million questions that I yep. want to ask. And, uh, so it's cool, you know, always setting up uh, networking meetings and educational meetings because, you know, I'm first say I'll never stop learning. Passionate curiosity, man. It's freaking awesome. How do you stay so positive? Man, you know, it's just, it, 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 trust me, I have a lot of negative self-talk, especially when I first wake up and I'm driving somewhere. But uh, it's gratitude and just, you know, being able to, to do things I never thought I could do or, or you know, live a life that I, I didn't think, you know, I, I could live and, and be able to give back to people, whether it's, you know, in, in town or out of country on a mission trip, whatever the case is. I'm just, you know, every day, a lot of times people joke around, another agent will call me and be like, I'm so sorry, and you're going to hate me, but we have to release due to the HOA because of X, Y, and Z. I'm like, look, 
that's Cadillac problems, man. I understand. It and, it, it, and like, they're like, you, they're like, please don't hate. I'm like, no, trust me. Like these are first world problems. I know right. it's going to affect both parties, but at the end of the day, everybody's going to get through it. And sometimes agents are like, how, like every time this has ever happened to me, I've been yelled at and reamed out and told I was a liar or whatever the case is. I'm like, honestly, you know, I, I will say my sellers are going to be really upset. Um, you know, they're, they're not going to like this news. There's nothing that I can do about it. And there's nothing, you know, you guys have the right within three days to, you know, and it's like t talking to sellers and explaining, you know, they already knew that that was a, a, a possibility, but Hey, instead of dwelling on that, let's focus all of our, our energy and our efforts to getting it sold and getting a higher offer or getting, a, you know, uh, uh, an offer with l less terms. And a lot of times people are like, there's no way, there's no way because it came off. And sure enough, you know, we, we put the focus and energy into it and, Honestly, nine times out of 10, I, I don't know how, but it, it's happened um, where we've got a, new, a <laughs> higher net to the seller. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you're lucky and this and that. And I'm like, no, it's not luck. It's it's work. It's working towards it. Hard work, determination, you know. Love that, man. James Nay, Richmond, Virginia. Crushing it, dude. You are. I, I'm solidly impressed, man. I, I love what you're doing. I support you. I'm coming down to Richmond. I'm going to come and sit and pick your brain, buddy. You can pick my brain too, but we're going to, we're going to have an equal brain picking session over, uh, over dinner. I'm only three hours from Richmond. And so how do people get a hold of you, man? If they want to come and pick your brain or, you know, somebody wants to just figure out what you're doing or, you know, why you're an awesome guy. Like how do people get a hold of you? Um, you know, on the, on the uh, toolbox uh, gift that there, I, I made sure that, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all, all of those platforms will be on there. But then also, you know, my cell phone is on there, which is 804-704-1944. Got it. Um, you know, just uh, preferably texting would probably be easier if it's, you know, if somebody out of, out of town and it's a different area code, because I'm sure as agents, we all get a lot of these, uh, yeah, these robo calls. So if, if a text, then we can, yeah. then we can, you know, talk on the phone, but a lot of times that, you know, just full disclosure, if it's a different area code, um, sometimes it's hard for me to answer. Well, dude, this has been awesome. Congratulations on the 30 under 30 from NAR. Congratulations on all your success, man. I, 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 I still, I just, I got to meet you because I really, really want to see your world and figure out how you're doing all this stuff. But, you know, you're, you're doing awesome, man. And, um, and congratulations and, and living the life that you actually want. And, dude, thanks for coming on Real Estate Rockstars and, and educating and sharing your story with our, with our, our audience. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's definitely an honor and, and I hope to hear from you soon. We'll, we'll connect outside. Definitely. And then real quick, the free gift that you're going to be giving the audience. What was that again? Uh, it's just touching on, um, you know, videography and targeting ads and just, okay. you know, it, it, and I'll say a quick 30 second thing about it is it's newer to me. I haven't been doing this for three or four years or anything. It's something that, you know, I've, I know other agents are doing it. It's not, you know, something that's new, uh, but it's a, a new marketing piece I'm doing. And with that, you know, one of the recent videos, one of the better ones, uh, with not a whole lot of money spent, it was able to get in front of over a hundred thousand people. Wow. And I had 70, yeah, 75,000 full views. Um, so, you know, and the goal is with a listing, I think that one was a $1.9 million house that, that, that had the views, uh, or that many views, um, that I have listed currently in, in, you know, the goal is to, is that that buyer capt or that video captivates a buyer and right. that they want to set up a showing with their agent, uh, most of the time, but it, in hopes that it will get the property sold. Right? right. Well, as a byproduct. So that's, that's the, that's the genuine intention of the video is not, Oh, let me double in this or, or whatever the case may be. But as that's the goal is to get the property sold. But as a byproduct, a lot of times people will see the video and they see that, uh, that I'm putting out other content and as a newer agent, it, they keep seeing stuff and they're like, we need to call James and get him to, you know, we need to interview him along with the other three agents we were going to interview. So it, it just puts my face in front of more people as potential new business. Um, it is a, a huge thing. And then also, uh, potentially selling that house and sometimes we'll bring a buyer towards it. So, Super but I just say man. that, yeah. So I, I would, I would urge anyone to try, you know, try videography out. It's very uncomfortable at first, even if you're using your cell phone and you're, you're doing a 
tour of an open house or you see some, you know, with, with the seller's permission, of course, yeah. or you, you see something cool when you're driving downtown and you're like, Oh, I, you know, you see it, you take a quick video of it and say, Hey, I wanted to show you guys this, look at this, uh, antique, whatever. And, uh, it, it, it really helps. That's awesome, man. Dude. Thanks again for coming on real estate rock stars, man. Keep crushing it. And we'll, uh, we'll catch up soon. Awesome, man. Thank you. My pleasure, man. Take care. Bye. What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them. And we plow them all into this toolbox. And we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient and the thing is it's absolutely free all you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999 that's toolbox 444-999 do it now rockstar nation thank you for listening to real estate rock stars listen i need a favor if you find this free content helpful if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful please i need you to pull out your pointing finger yes the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe yes subscribe the more subscribers we get the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like robert kiyosaki barbara corcoran all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities all that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get so please subscribe and listen there's a lot of places you can leave comments there's a lot of places you can like we're on facebook we have an instagram page instagram pages i am pat hyben the facebook is real estate rockstars radio feel free to leave us comments there the most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.